Hello and welcome to the Friday, September 6, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Las Vegas, Nevada. Data enrichment is an important aspect of better understanding network data or really a lot of different uh, log data. Jesse today wrote about some of the sources that he uses to augment the data collected by his honeypot. The goal of enrichment is to provide added context to your data. I sometimes refer to it as coloring your logs, like emphasizing certain lines by displaying them in a different uh, color. For example, if an attacker downloads additional malware from a particular URL, VirusTotal may provide some additional insight into the nature and history of the malicious file. URL House, which is another source that Jesse mentions, may on the other hand provide insight into how long a particular URL has been available for and whether or not the content of the URL has changed over time. This time of enrichment is not just useful for honeypots, but uh, to add context to many different types of log that you monitor. And of course, honeypots provide a great playground to experiment with some of these enrichment techniques. Backup software maker Veeam did release patches for several critical vulnerabilities for its Veeam provider console. Two of the vulnerabilities are rated with a CVSS score of 9.9, two more are rated 8.5. The first 9.9 vulnerability enabled a low privilege attacker to access the NTLM hash of the service account. Of course, the NTLM hash tends to be easy to reverse, which then leads to a compromise of the service account and lateral movement. The second 9.9 .9 vulnerability does allow an attacker to upload an arbitrary file to the server, which then may lead to remote code execution and a complete compromise of the system. To fix these issues, update Veeam Service Provider Console to version 8.1. This was part of Veeam's September update. There are other Veeam products that are being updated here, also vulnerabilities being fixed in those products, but uh, these particular vulnerabilities stick out a little bit for their severity. And more news from open source CRM Suite OF BIS. Rapid7 published a blog post not only explaining a new unauthenticated remote code execution vulnerability, but also clarifying some of the intricacies around a number of other vulnerabilities patched in OFBIS in recent months. I wrote about some exploit attempts against OFBIS recently that we have observed in our honeypot. And yeah, it was indeed quite confusing to distinguish between the different vulnerabilities being exploited because the patterns being observed here are really fairly similar, mostly around directory traversal issues that then allow actually to take advantage of some of the vulnerable endpoints. According to Rapid7, the latest vulnerability allows an attacker with no valid credentials to exploit a missing view authorization check in the web application to execute arbitrary code on the server. Again, similar to the prior vulnerabilities and actually exploiting these latest vulnerability involves bypassing some of the patches that were applied for the three earlier vulnerabilities. Update to version 18, 12, 16 to fix any of these issues. And Cisco released patches for its smart licensing utility. It fixes several critical vulnerabilities that can be exploited to allow an unauthenticated remote attacker to collect sensitive information to or administer the Cisco smart licensing utility service on a system while the software is running. One of the vulnerabilities is, well, pretty much a straightforward backdoor or as Cisco calls them, static credentials, which allow an attacker to log in to the affected system with administrative uh, privileges. These credentials have not been known prior to now, but of course, 
Once the water bill has been made public, it's just a matter of a fairly short time usually for these credentials to become widely known. A second vulnerability would provide an attacker with access to credentials by sending a request to the system retrieving a log file. So accessing the log file does not require any credentials. That's part one of the vulnerability here. But due to part two of the vulnerability and overly verbose logging, credentials are actually being logged to this file. And now the unauthenticated attacker gains access to the credentials and of course can then later use them to take over the system. Patches are available and well, that's really what you have to do here. There is no sort of other mitigation that Cisco recommends other than patching. Well, is it for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for feedback provided and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.